Elite Facts presents Seven Ridiculous Lies We Were Taught in School. Seven. We only use 10% of our brains. Lies. Lies and slander. There's a common myth saying we can only use about 10% of our brain, therefore implying that we're only tapping at the surface of our vast potentials. Now, it seems reasonable. I mean, we are, as a human race, only getting smarter and smarter. Well, most of us. But in reality, neurologist Barry Gordon has destroyed that myth. Although the origins of that myth are still a mystery, what Barry has found out is that we use 10% of our brains while we are at rest or thinking. Barry goes on to explain that we use almost every part of our brain and that the brain is active almost all of the time. He states that the brain weighs only about 3% of the body's weight but uses up 20% of the body's energy. Even during sleep, where most people assume the brain is least active, the brain is still hypersensitive. Through imaging and mapping, neuroscientists have concluded that we use virtually all of our brain throughout the day. Six. Coal is used to make diamonds. This one is a fairly common misconception that we're sure almost everyone has fallen for. Everyone in school believes that diamonds are made from coal when it's highly compressed, but this is yet another lie of many that we are told throughout our tenure at school. In actuality, diamonds are formed in vertical shafts filled with rocks that are formed by volcanoes. In fact, coal and diamonds are very rarely found in the same area. Coal is most often found near the surface of the Earth, while diamonds can be found in the Earth's mantle and are carried up by volcanic eruptions. One thing that is true about this lie is that diamonds are formed by intense heat and pressure, but from carbon rather than coal. 5. Blood is blue. The myth that deoxygenated blood is blue arises from the fact that our veins appear to be blue. I mean, it's a common theory that we're sure all of us have fallen for. The myth goes that blood turns red when it's exposed to oxygen, which is why we bleed red instead of blue. However, this idea is completely false. The reason our veins appear to be blue isn't because of oxygen or any sort of exposure and reaction our blood gets outside of our wounds. It's instead because of the way our eyes perceive colors. When light is refracted through the layers of the skin, mostly blue light reflects back to our eyes, making our veins look blue. Four. Lincoln was opposed to slavery. When we learn about Abraham Lincoln in school, he's celebrated for being one of the greatest proponents for freeing the slaves. However, the truth about Lincoln is a lot less heroic. Lincoln didn't necessarily want to emancipate the slaves, he just wanted to make the Union stronger, and emancipating the slaves was a part of that. Lincoln said, quote, If I could save the Union without freeing any slaves, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing all of the slaves, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing some and leaving others alone, I would do that. Lincoln's loyalty was with the Union, not the slaves. 3. Einstein used to suck at math. Okay, so we could totally be wrong about this, but has no one ever thought that maybe this was a little white lie told by a teacher to make a student who's bad at math feel better about getting a bad grade during an exam? No? Oh, okay, moving on. It's been touted that the great scientist Albert Einstein was a horrible math student who even failed some math tests. This is a complete myth. Not only was Einstein a fantastic math student, he regularly ranked at the top of his class. Einstein himself stated that he had never failed in mathematics. Quote, before I was 15, I had mastered differential and integral calculus. This myth may have been born out of the fact that while in university, Einstein began to become more involved with physics than math. Over time, Einstein would begin to attend fewer and fewer math courses and received a 4 out of 6 point scale back then in mathematics, when he usually got a perfect score in other courses. He wrongly believed that physicists only needed an elementary understanding of mathematics, thus he decided to forego or pay less attention to the math courses. This led to one of his professors infamously calling the soon-to-be rock star of science, as we like to put, a lazy dog. Sorry kids struggling with math, we recommend hitting the books harder. Sorry, but that's just the reality of the situation. Hard work and studying does pay off. 2. Columbus discovered that the Earth is round. 
1492, an Italian traveler by the name of Christopher Columbus won his long-standing feud with the monarchy and the Catholic Church to get funding for a voyage to East Asia. They were afraid that he would fail spectacularly, because back then it was common knowledge that the world as we know it was a flat disk, and the direction Columbus was sailing in would cause him to fall off the edge and into the abyss. Columbus, as we were told, did fail to reach the destination, but not because the world was flat, it was because he crashed into the future land of the free. Thus, Columbus proved the world was round, discovered America, and a national holiday was born. Roll out the barbecues and fireworks. The truth, however, is that back in the 1400s, the flat earth theory was taken about as seriously as the time cube theory is today, if not less so. The shape of the world has been pretty much settled since the orb theory was first proposed by the ancient Greek philosopher Pythagoras, around 2,000 years before the existence of Spain. In fact, the navigational techniques of Columbus's time were actually based on the fact that the Earth was a sphere. Trying to navigate the globe as if it was a flat plane would have screwed up the trip even more than it was. The Spanish government's reluctance to pay for Columbus's expeditions didn't have anything to do with their misconceptions about the shape of the world. Ironically, it was because Columbus himself severely underestimated the size of the Earth, and everybody knew it. So the question now is where did the myth come from? It began with author and historical charlatan Washington Irving, who wrote a novel about Columbus in 1838. The novel was fiction, but some elements managed to creep into our history textbooks anyway, probably by some editors who wanted to make it more interesting to readers. 1. Ben Franklin Invented Lightning did you know that Ben Franklin is the god of lightning? Yeah, we totally made that up, but the way school textbooks explain it, he might as well be. He had quite the interest in electricity, and faced with intense skepticism from his colleagues about his theory that lightning is in fact electricity, legend has it that he conducted an experiment to prove them wrong. Franklin, with a knowing wink, went out during an extremely dangerous thunderstorm and released a kite with a lightning rod affixed to the top with a metal key attached to the string. Eventually, Thor got pissed that Franklin was waving his fancy kite in his face and eventually struck the kite's rod. The charge of energy passed down the string and into the key, and when Franklin touched the key, it let off a spark of static, which somehow allowed him to discover electricity. And he was then introduced into the Marvel Cinematic Universe as Bald Thor. Okay, that last part didn't happen. However, the actual truth behind this is that although it is true that Franklin at least proposed a kite experiment, he never got around to performing the experiment himself. It should also be said that the experiment had nothing to do with lightning. If someone flew a kite into a storm and it was struck by lightning, there's a good chance that person would be utterly destroyed. In fact, everyone in the vicinity would at least suffer from hairless scalp syndrome. While few people still believe that all of Franklin's innovations are actually attributable to his pet mouse, the kite story is still widely accepted despite the unfortunate testimonies of anyone who's ever been stupid enough to replicate it. The reality of Franklin's experiment is that it simply involved flying a kite into some clouds to collect a few harmless ions in order to prove that the atmosphere carries a charge. It is through Franklin's discoveries that science was able to infer later on that lightning probably has something to do with electricity. Don't forget to like us and subscribe for more Elite Facts.